This video on Z charts is really necessary if you do not have a graphics calculator or if you really want to get the excellence questions. So these Z charts are how to do things manually by hand. You need to do that for an excellence question and you need to do that if you don't have a graphics calculator but if that's not you, you can actually skip this video because there's faster ways in moving forwards. But if that is you, let's learn how to use a Z chart when talking about normal distribution. So in the last video, we looked at male height distribution. We learned that we had a mean, and we also learned that we had various standard deviations. One standard deviation was 34.1% away from the mean. Two standard deviations was 13.6. Three standard deviations was another 2.1 and 0.1% of this whole population was outside three standard deviations away, where standard deviation is just a measure of how spread out this bell curve was. Now, how does a Z chart come into this? Well, we have a thing called a Z score, and a Z score is how many standard deviations a certain position is. So this orange line here is 1.5 standard deviations away from the median. This other line over here is 1.2 standard deviations away from the median. So that would have a z-score of 1.2. This next z-score is 1.65 standard deviations away from this median here. Therefore, it has a z-score of 1.65. Now we're going to learn how do we find this z-score and how do we change a z-score into a probability. So let's look at a question to work out how we would do this. What is the probability that somebody is shorter than the height with a Z value of 1.65. Now remember, a Z value of 1.65 means we are 1.65 standard deviations away from the mean. So if we want to find a probability, we need to know a couple of things about this bell curve first. The first thing is, there's 0 0.5 or half of the population to the left of the mean that's shorter than this average height, and half of the population which is above the mean, that's above this average height. So we're going to use the 0.5 as part of our probability, or the same as 50%. So now we know half of the population is below this 177 centimetres, but we don't actually know what proportion of the population is between the mean and 1.65 standard deviations away, where we have our z-score. So that's what we're going to need to work out. And we're going to do this by using one of these big z-charts. Now this gets given to you in your resource booklet. It looks complicated, but it's just a matter of reading the top and the sides. So we start off with our z-score. Now our z-score is 1.65. So first of all, we look down this very left-hand column here, and we find 1.6, the first two points in our z-score. Now we have 1.65, so our next number is we're going to go across to the 5 column up the top here. And we move down that column until we find what number aligns with both of these points, with 1.65. And we find that that number is 0 0.4505. Now because we've got 0 0.4505, that means that 0 0.4505 of the population, so a bit less than half, exists between the mean and this 1.65 standard deviations away. Therefore, we can actually work out that if we had half of the population, or 0 0.5 of the population, over the left-hand side of the mean, and we have 0.045 of the population on the right hand side of the mean up until the sleep score of 1.65, that must mean there's a total of 0.95 of the population or 95% of the population is below this height here, the height with a Z score of 1.65. So I don't expect you to fully have understood why we did all of this, but hopefully you get an idea of what a Z score is. It's a number of standard deviations away from the mean. The idea that there is half of the population below the mean and half of the population above the mean. And the idea that we can change a z-score to a proportion of the population. Like we turned the z-score of 1.65 using our big chart into that number 0.45. Which means 0.45 of the 0.5 on this side exists before this z-score. Now this actually fits together with a formula. And this formula underpins what you'll do on your calculator if you learn to do it in your calculator in the future. Or we'll show you how to answer the excellence level questions. So to understand what this formula is all about, Z is just the number of standard deviations. X is the number of interest that we're trying to find. Mu is the mean. And this symbol down the bottom is the standard deviation. 
Now you'll get given these points if you need to work out a z-score so that you can plug them into this formula and work it out on your calculator. So if we were to be given a question, what is the probability that someone is shorter than 184 centimeters if the mean is 177 and the standard deviation is 4? We can use our formula to do this. We don't actually know what our z-score is. They haven't told us that in the question. So we might need to find that. They have told us a number of interests. They said, what is the probability that somebody is shorter than 184 centimeters? So that's the point that we want to know about. They've also said there's a mean of 177 centimeters, and they've said there's a standard deviation of four. We're trying to find the probability. So if we're not doing it on our calculator, we have to use a big Z chart. And if we want to use a Z chart, we have to know the Z score to look up. And that's where this formula comes in. So if we plug our numbers into this formula with an X, a number of interest of 184, a mean of 177, and a standard deviation of 4, that gives us a Z score of 1.75. Now that we know that, we can look up 1.75 on our Z chart and we'll be able to find our probability. So we go down to 1.7 on this left hand column, we move across to column 5 up here, and then we find the number that fits with both of those, which is 0.4599. Now that we know that, that's fantastic. But remember, this is a number from the center. We started at the center and went up to a z-score of 1.75. There's still this big 0.5 of the other side. Half of the population is still below the mean. It's just 0.4599 is between the mean and this 184 centimeters up here. That means we've found the 0.4599 up here, up into our 1.75 standard deviations away. And we know that there's half the population on this left-hand side Therefore, the entire proportion of the population is 0.9599 of the population is below 184 centimeters tall. Let's look at one last question now, and in this case, I want to go backwards to see how we can go back from a probability to a z-score. So if we've got a question like, what is the z-score of the height that 60% of people are shorter than? So that means there's going to be a height where 60% of people are shorter than that height. And we need to find out what is the z-score of that height. Now this 60% is going to be made up of the 50% on the left hand side and the 10% on the right hand side. There's a little 10% or a 0.1 in here and there's half of the population in on this left hand side to make up our total of 0.6 or 60%. Next, we need to turn the 60% back into a z-score. And that's where we're going to look at these little difference numbers up the top here. If we have a probability of 0.1, which is the distance away from this mean here, we need to find a number on this chart which is the closest we can possibly find to 0.1. So if we filter through all these numbers, the closest number we can find is the 0.0987. And that's going to be closer to 0.1 than 0.1026. Now we're still a little bit away from the 0.1 that we wanted, so we can make it up with these numbers over here. We need another 0.0013. Now these differences refer to 0.00 something. So this would be 0.0004, 0.0008, 0.0012. Now because we need 0.0013 different, there's a 13 difference in there, the 12 is the closest that we're possibly going to get. So we can read off now our z-score. Our z-score would be 0.2, as the first two numbers, 0.25, and then we're going to add on this little 12, which is under a 3. So our final answer would be 0.253, and that would be our z-score. And now that we know our z-score, we've found our answer. And that is the z-score of what 60% of people are shorter than. Now let's look at what you need to know out of this whole video because we've been covering a variety of different things. The first thing you need to know is that this symbol means the mean and this symbol means the standard deviation. We're going to have a number of interest that we need to find and that's shown by the symbol X. So X is the number that we're interested in in the question. It's the number they're asking you about. Mu is the mean. The sigma is the standard deviation. The z-score is the number of standard deviations away that we're looking at, and we use this chart up here to change between z-scores by reading off the column down the left 
and the row up the top to find what our probability is. So that allows us to change between Z scores and probabilities. Now this formula in the middle allows us to find out what our Z score is if the question has just told us a mean, a standard deviation and a number of interest. We need to pop these numbers into the formula before we find a Z score. Then once we know a Z score, we can go to the chart and find out what our probability is. So I hope that gives you a clear idea of how Z scores relate to probabilities. Now in the future videos, we're going to go through how you would answer problems on your calculator, but we're also going to do the same problem each time using the Z score sheet. So that if you don't have a graphics calculator, or if you're looking to get excellence level problems, you'll be able to get used to applying this formula and applying these rules in the questions that are to come.